Hey Micah Files, it's Anna McHugh. I'm here to talk to you about honey mushrooms. So we're gonna talk about ringed honey mushrooms, ringless honey mushrooms, armillaria, desarmillaria. We're gonna talk about glowing mycelium, uh, plant pathogens, and how to, uh, you know, at least observe and be aware of these fungi. Uh, this is a seasonal episode, so every fall we get a tremendous bloom of armillaria species and desarmillaria species commonly called honey mushrooms. So I'm gonna go through, first of all, identification of these edible fungi, and then the differences between sort of the two primary uh, types that we see in uh, at least my area. So I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. So we have uh, Armillaria malia group. This is sort of your classic honey mushroom. And the uh, common name is derived from the color of these caps, really gorgeous uh, fungus. It is edible. I don't eat it because some people are uh, sensitive to it and they can get belly aches or gastrointestinal distress. So I am a little sensitive, so I err on the you know cautious side and I just take photographs of them and enjoy seeing them. Uh, but you know, besides this really distinctive cap, which you have, you know, the honeyish color that sort of darkens in the middle, and you have a little bit of a, a uh, you know, a raised area that's a little bumpy in the center. You also have a pretty robust stem uh, that sort of darkens toward the base. You have a little bit of uh, sort of not scaliness so much as like slightly furry and streaky a really, really distinctive ring around the stem that is uh, yellowy on the sort of outside and uh, whitish and very uh, sort of, you know, um, it, it's soft and uh, robust, so it, it's a really, really nice ring. You also have, uh, you know, gills that are deep and blade-like. They do uh, attach to the stem. Sometimes you see them running a little bit down, but for the most part, it's, you know, closely attached uh, to your stem here. And uh, so these are mature specimens when they're a little bit younger. What I love to see is uh, before this um, ring breaks, you have uh, sort of a, you know, uh, a nice attached uh, little veil there. And that, that's very attractive to me. So again, I don't eat these mushrooms. Uh, other things that I guess I can note about them is that the um, stems themselves, besides being, um, you know, darkening toward the base and a little bit on the sort of streaky furry side, uh, they also are very, uh, you know, robust and stringy. So if you uh, start to break it apart, it's very fibrous. It's got a lot of uh, sort of snap to it. Uh, so, you know, when it comes to edibility, um, again, I don't eat them because of uh, people being sensitive to them. I haven't had an issue in the past, like I've tried them, but at the same time, I just uh, don't bother at this point. Uh, but people do cook them very thoroughly. It's also recommended by a lot of folks to parboil them first. So you just throw them in boiling water for a couple of minutes and then cook them thoroughly. So um, that is the deal with Armillaria malia. We do have other ringed honey mushrooms uh, that you'll find in the forests of North Carolina. So we have Armillaria gallica, which is kind of similar. It tends to be a little smaller. I find it more often like in the woods as opposed to, you know, under um, sort of like a lighter forest. Uh, and also they are a little hairier on top and they uh, tend to be more brown in color. So you uh, have Armillaria gallica, fairly common. You see it a little more in the summer. These guys are just as common as can be uh, once the weather turns and we start to get uh, cooler temperatures. And then um, also out west, we have Armillaria oistiae. That is actually the uh, species that is one of the largest organisms on earth, if you've heard of this. Uh, it is a um, you know mushroom, presumably one organism, it's not entirely clear. But if it is, the single uh, you know mycelium of this Armillaria oistiae covers 96 million square feet. So it is a massive organism. Uh, and, you know, somewhere in the uh, at least 2200 years old, I think is what, uh, what uh, the sources cite. So it is a very, very old, very rabid uh, organism. Ravenous, you know, has been uh, consuming the forests around it for a very, very long time. Um, you know, I do want to make a clarification. Some people say that it is the largest organism on Earth. It is not uh, as simple as that. As I mentioned, it's not entirely clear. It's like one mycelium. Additionally, we have uh, a quaking grove of aspen that uh, could in fact be larger. 
And then we also have other organisms that, you know, really rate for that. So, I mean, largest organism on Earth, grain of salt. It is massive, like almost 96 million uh, square feet is pretty big in my estimation. So uh, there are your, you know, ringed uh, honey mushrooms. There are other ones as well, but those are the primary ones I want to cover in Armillaria malia group. I call it a group because there are probably multiple species represented. As with everything in mycology, we have sort of a, a regular, you know, discrimination uh, and delineation of additional species that emerge. Um, and so, you know, that I, I think is very likely to be the case, especially with our North American mushrooms, because we've been studying them for less long. And a lot of times you'll see uh, divisions between uh, European species and North American species. Also the division between uh, essentially what's on the east of the Rocky Mountains versus the west of the Rocky Mountains. So you see a lot of differences in species there. And then there's the Midwest, which is totally crazy. And there's sort of a combination amalgamation of all those things. So uh, anyway, that I, all caveats aside, this, that's the uh, ringed honey mushroom group. So as far as uh, other honey mushrooms that you'll see, this is Desarmillaria cespitosa, also known as the ringless honey mushroom. Um, and it's known as a honey mushroom just because it used to be uh, categorized as an armillaria. As you can see, it typically does not have these, uh, you know, sort of winsome, winsome honey colors of armillaria malia group. So it tends to be a much more sort of uh, dingy, you know, fawn brown, uh, really does vary a good bit. You do, however, have a lot of similarities. So they're conjoined at the base. You'll find them growing at the base of trees. Both of these uh, species are highly parasitic, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but as far as, you know, distinguishing between them, uh, you can see, you know, some very obvious uh, similarities as far as their clustering behavior. Uh, but, you know, these mushrooms do not have rings on the stem, hence, uh, you know, ringless honey mushroom. Desarmillaria cespitosa, you know, oftentimes when it's in its sort of most desirable edible state is like this. So it's very uh, light in color. You can see sometimes a little bit of hairiness starting to develop on the top. But in general, these are just sort of a, a plain dun colored mushroom with gills that are attached. Uh, but they do start to, you know, as the mushrooms mature, uh, run down the stem a little bit. But, you know, typically people who eat them will gather them when they're sort of at this uh, age because they're smaller, they're less uh, fibrous as they, you know, mature. I do want to show you a couple of other specimens also to show you sort of the range that you will see. These are more mature uh, ringless honey mushrooms. So this is actually a far more representative uh, specimen of what you'll see. They grow really, really rapidly. So oftentimes, like you'll see honey mushrooms or ringless honeys that look like this in the morning and they'll be like this by the, uh, you know, mid afternoon or the following day. Uh, but these really demonstrate the clearest, uh, you know, um, sort of uh, identification features for Desarmillaria cespitosa. So you have a clustering dude, uh, oftentimes with this sort of brown, even cinnamon color starting to emerge. Uh, you have a little bit of hairiness or scurfiness right on the top. Sometimes that's way more pronounced, but you know, that is very consistent. It sort of has a almost, it's just a little bit on the, um, you know, uh, pattern side or like a little patina kind of. So it isn't really a, you know, a consistent sort of matte finish. Uh, you have stems that are pretty stinking uh, fibrous and then also uh, gills that are sort of, um, you know, they start out a lightish uh, light color. So like more in the, you know, beige area, but as they mature, they start to turn brown. So, uh, you know, and, and again, sometimes when you see them when they're way mature, they'll be running, uh, those gills will be running down the stem. You'll also see uh, staining start to pop up. So it's sort of a like brown purplish stain that will start to streak the gills. Um, and they have a white spore print that is really, really uh, dramatic and pronounced. Very frequently, if you catch these uh, mushrooms when they are sporulating, you'll just see massive deposits all over the lower mushrooms, like the, the understory, uh, you know, basement level mushrooms. So you can pretty easily see, uh, you know, the, the spore uh, deposit with these guys when they're mature. So I do want to show you a kind of unusual collection of Desarmillaria cespitosa. Um, I at first thought that these were uh, Armillaria malia group because you can see they have that really nice orangey gold, uh, you know, um, 
honeyish color. And so, you know, this is a fairly unusual collection, but it does show you some of the variability in Desarmillaria cespitosa. Uh, and, you know, as you can see, they really do look very similar from the top, but you can see the differences as well. You know, it's kind of a superficial, uh, you know, color flash, but uh, this differentiation that you have, the more consistent fat cap, that's another thing about honey mushrooms. They're a lot more like a traditional mushroom than uh, Desar malaria, where you have a lot less flesh in the middle and it's a lot more on the way of gill. Uh, but, you know, also you don't have that sort of coloration change here going on. Uh, so, you know, there are definitely uh, distinctions between the two. So, I want to talk about honey mushrooms and their parasitic habits because uh, our malaria, malia, and related mushrooms are considered to be some of the most common uh, causes of death and, you know, parasitic species that attack uh, trees. And so, you know, they will attack pretty much anything. I guess their uh, sort of order of preference on their hierarchy of preferences is, uh, you know, hardwoods and deciduous trees. They also attack conifers, and I understand that they also attack sort of uh, more ground-lying shrubs and so forth. Um, there aren't a lot of really good, you know, obvious indicators that a tree has been attacked by armillaria or desarmillaria. You will obviously see the mushrooms start to crop up, but uh, underneath the soil you have what's called a, a boot lace uh, rot or a, a boot lace rhizomorph. So it's this really thick black, uh, you know, rhizomorph essentially, this root type thing that will uh, attack different tree systems. And they can, you know, travel quite far. They're also very resilient. They have um, a sort of laminate that covers this boot lace type thing. So it really does in some ways, you know, resemble that. It almost has a lacquered color or, a, you know, a lacquered appearance to it ever so slightly. And that means that those rhizomorphs are really difficult to uh, break down. They're not nearly as penetrable and uh, vulnerable as other mycelia. And so, you know, they can grow and uh, attack other trees. Additionally, they can last a very long time. My understanding is that individual boot laces uh, can survive in excess of 100 years just because they're so very resilient uh, and resistant to rot. So, you know, you'll see that, uh, that in the, uh, you know, the soil and uh, whatever wood mulch you have beneath a tree that has been infected by armillaria or desarmillaria. Um, you'll also see sometimes signs of distress on the tree. So, you know, yellowing of leaves uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, rot itself can be sort of a whitish color, but oftentimes you'll see like little uh, peeling uh, beginning to develop on, uh, on the, um, uh, bark of a tree. So, you know, it really is highly parasitic and there's not a whole lot that you can do about it. Uh, you know, the, the best recommendations that I was able to find are, you know, keep your soil well aerated, maybe consider, uh, you know, raking up the uh, mycelial mat as much as you can and, uh, you know, try to expose it to sun. And again, um, sort of less moisture may uh, sort of cause the mycelium to shrink. But at the same time, it's really, um, you know, it's a bad way to go. And unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about it. So this is, uh, you know, a highly parasitic mushroom. I think this is also one of those examples like, I love mushrooms and I love my mycorrhizal, you know, symbiotic kumbaya species that are, you know, feeding their uh, tree partners with all this lovely, uh, you know, moisture and nutrition and the trees are, are, you know, willingly sharing their photosynthetic sugars. And so that's very nice and, you know, uh, sort of triggers the mycophile in me, but it is always important when studying any organisms to understand that you also have, uh, you know, not, not everybody in the fungal world is as, uh, you know, agreeable to the, uh, you know, um, well-balanced ecosystems that I treasure and fancy. And uh, armillaria and desarmillaria definitely fall into that category. So, uh, final notes, I want to talk about bioluminescence because uh, armillaria and, uh, I don't know if that's armillaria, but definitely armillaria malia uh, has a um, uh, bioluminescent uh, mycelium. And so I haven't personally seen this, but I guess you can see in the wood, especially that it resides in, a faint greenish glow, and that's called foxfire. So you'll see that in Huckleberry Finn. There's a section about foxfire, this sort of, uh, you know, effervescent and, and uh, eerie greenish glow in the forest. And that is the uh, mycelium of uh, our malaria malia group. 
Um, and the uh, chemical reaction that causes this is pretty interesting, at least in my estimation. It contains a chemical called luciferin, and uh, when it oxidizes with this protein called luciferase, it emits this greenish glow and a sort of a cool green glowing color. The thing that I find to be fascinating about this is that luciferin and this luciferase sort of relationship exists in other glowing uh, organisms. So firefly butts, for instance, or squid that, you know, have uh, greenish glowing sort of uh, the, you know, color changing um, amazing skins that they have. And so, uh, you know, this bioluminescence, it's not entirely clear what the uh, function or mechanism is, or not mechanism, but the, the reason for it. Um, you know, there are other uh, mushrooms that are bioluminescent, so Omphalatus uh, alludens probably being the most common in the eastern U.S., uh, also known as the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. So the fruiting bodies themselves will actually uh, faintly glow green because of luciferin. And uh, again, in the case of our malaria malia group, it is just the mycelium. So, uh, you know, there are theories that uh, the glowing is to attract uh, nighttime insects who will eat the fruiting bodies and, you know, disturb the mycelium and sort of, um, you know, uh, basically assist in the transmission of the mycelium and the spores to other locations. Uh, there's also, you know, some hypotheses around it being a, a warning signal to say, hey, you know, stay away. I'm a glowing dangerous thing in the dark, or uh, just as likely in my estimation, it could just be something super random. You have oxidization going on, you have, you know, these uh, enzymes that uh, honey mushrooms exude that break down lignine, so a really, uh, you know, big burly molecule that makes wood uh, hard and brittle. That's one of the things that the honey fungus is going after. And so you have all this enzymatic action going on because lignine really needs a lot of chemicals to break down. So once you have that going on, you have luciferin present, you have all of this different uh, sort of microbiological activity, it's entirely possible that the glowing of the mycelium is just completely incidental. But one way or the other, I really hope at some point I do see some fox fire. I spend a lot of time in the woods, but not a lot of time out there in the dark. And so, you know, I want to uh, visit one of the places where I find these mushrooms really abundantly. And, uh, you know, um, stick around past nightfall, maybe read myself a bedtime story and see if I can see uh, them glow in the dark. So long and short, our malaria, malia group and relatives, they've got rings and many of them are this beautiful honey color. Desarmillaria cespitosa uh, used to be called Armillaria tibescens, the ringless honey mushroom tends to be brown, but sometimes is a little bit on the honey color too. Uh, but, you know, doesn't have a ring and is a little bit less robust, a little bit less uh, mushroomy than our honey mushrooms. So I appreciate your time. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your honey fungus season. And should you choose to eat them, if that is, uh, you know, your bag, I hope you enjoy them very much.